In the last video, I showed you how to set up the firmware and the automatic tool changing. Up next are the individual tool offsets. For simplicity's sake and to give you an idea of what's going on, let's start with just setting the Z offsets. For this, we need to hot tighten the nozzles first, as it will affect the length of each hot end and therefore the heights of the tools. In addition, we need to level the print bed so that the individual nozzle distances are measured with repeat accuracy. Only after that we will use the high precision nozzle adjusting tool that E3D gave us all for free. When the printer isn't homed, you can switch the heaters of the individual tools on and off without the tools actually being picked up. This is used to quickly set all four tools on standby. The nozzles of the tools are being tightened at 250 degrees C. It takes a moment for them to heat up. Meanwhile, you can remove the silicon socks. Then tighten the nozzle with about 3 newton meters of force. If a heating fault occurs during this process, it's not a big deal. We simply reset this fault later. However, the DUET controller board switches off the corresponding heater to be on the safe side. The temperature graph shows nicely how the temperature of the heater block drops as soon as it gets grabbed by the pliers. Finally, press the red emergency stop button in the web UI to reset the printer and the errors. Do you remember the first episode? We will align the print bit later. Now the time has come. With the automatic match bed leveling, the position of the print bed is indicated very accurately. The only disadvantage, it takes 32 seconds until the measurement is done. Then it will show you something like this, or maybe even worse, like this. As a result, a mesh is displayed afterwards, showing how the bed is aligned to the XY plane. Notice that the origin is in the front left corner. The zero point from Z homing is taken as a reference. To shorten this 32 second long process for the setup process, we can temporarily reduce the number of probing points. To do this, we simply copy the complete M557 command from the config.g and change the grid size with the S parameter. The difference of 10 and 290 is 280 and the difference of 20 and 180 
is 160. With this grid size, only 4 points are probed and the measurement process now only takes 9 seconds. Furthermore, the displayed mesh is way more simplified now. If you hover the mouse over the measured points, you will be able to read the measured value. In this case, it is about 1.2 mm at the front left and about 0.15 mm at the front right corner. The exact value is not that important, it is much more important that left and right are the same height. To align the bed now, loosen the four screws a little bit until you can move the whole print bed. Wiggle the bed a bit to even it out the best you can. And execute the mesh bed leveling again. A little shortcut is to send G32 via the input field at the top. This looks much better. You can ignore the warning about the homing offset. It is now about 0.58mm on the front left and about 0.4mm on the front right. Only a difference of less than 0.2mm across the entire width. The easiest way to make such a small adjustment is to tighten the four screws again slightly so that the print bit will not lose its position on its own but still loose enough that you can adjust it with careful nudges. I use a very, very light rubber hammer for this, applying just a little light knock in the wanted direction. A new probing shows that even this light knock was already way too much. Therefore, I'm pushing the print bed back down again. After this probing, it's the same as before, a difference of about 0.2 mm. This time, I need to hit the bed even lighter. Now, the probing result shows a difference of only 0.05 mm across. Actually, it's almost enough to be satisfied with. A last tiny nudge in the right direction will hopefully improve the result. Alright, here we go. 0.677mm to 0.665mm, a difference of just 0.012mm, a hundredth of a millimeter. That's precise enough, I think. After the four screws are tightened correctly again, Let's check the position once more. The print bed has shifted a bit. There is now a difference of 0.03 mm. For this tutorial, however, this is sufficiently accurate, but you are welcome to adjust your tool changer even more precisely. Now that the print bed is leveled in the X direction, we can check the Y direction. Here you can see that it is about half a millimeter lower in the back. How convenient that an M3 washer is almost exactly 0.5 mm thick. That means we can simply put two washers below the rear fixing points of the heated bed.
A last measurement shows that the print bed is now almost perfectly leveled. A casual click on the red reset button resets the mesh grid back to the stored value in the config G and the final measurement results in a wonderful aligned print bed. The Z offset of the individual tools must be set at the same place where the Z is referenced, at the center of the print bed. In order to hit this point repeatedly, we create a macro for it. To do this, simply go to Macros, click on New File and choose a reasonable name. I call it Move to Mid. The macro will be opened automatically and then I can enter the G1 Move command to move the print head to the middle. Click on Save at the top right. The move command is quickly available via the macro shortcut. Ok, here we go. The tool changer is homed, the bed is heated up to the usual temperature, in my case it's 60 degrees C, and all tools are heated up to 235 degrees C. If all tools are already preheated now, we don't have to wait that long for the tools to change during the upcoming setup process. Pick tool 0 and use the move to mid macro we just created to go to the center position. The supplied info paper from E3D is exactly 0.11 mm thick. We will use it for the well-known paper method. The easiest way to set the Z offset is to adjust the known offset of the respective tool that is stored in the config.g. To avoid typos, we just copy the whole line of the G10 command for the selected tool 0 from config.g. Paste the command we just copied into the input field and then move the nozzle closer to the paper. As soon as the nozzle grabs the paper ever so slightly, we have reached the correct position. Then, subtract the difference between the displayed position and the real position from the initial offset. If you don't like math, you can also adjust the offset by trial and error. To do so, simply adjust the Z value and send it to the printer until the web UI shows a value of 0 0.11 mm like I just did here. You can repeat this process as often as you like. Once the web UI shows the paper thickness of 0.11mm, copy the entire line again to avoid typos. Then replace the existing line in the config.g file. We will now repeat this whole process for the next tool. Copy the complete line of tool 1, save the changes, but do not restart the printer. Then switch to tool 1 and move it to the center with the macro. Paste the copied command into the input field at the top and do look for the ideal height of the nozzle with the paper method again.
If jogging with the buttons does two big steps, you can change the distance with the right click on the corresponding button. With the previously mentioned formula, you can quickly calculate the new offset. Old offset minus the difference of the shown position to the real position is the new offset. As soon as the web UI shows the thickness of the paper after sending the modified command, the new offset is correct. Copy the whole line and paste it into config.g. Copy the next line of 202 and save the config.g but do not restart the printer. And repeat again. Pick the next tool, tool 2, move to the center by using the macro, paste the just copied command into the input field at the top and do the paper method once more. As soon as you are comfortable with the height, calculate the new offset and send it to the printer to verify with the web UI. Once verified, copy the line, paste it into config.g and copy the last G10 line from tool 3. Exit the config.g by saving, but again do not restart the printer. In my case, 2.3 is a volcano hotend, so I have to lower the bed quite a bit to avoid hitting it with the tool. Pick the last tool, move it to the middle with the macro and find the height with the paper method one last time. Calculate the new Z offset for tool 3. Send it to the printer to verify with the web UI again. And then finally copy it to config.g. Save and exit, but still do not restart the printer. First, drop off the tool. Now restart the printer. The Z offset of all tools has now been configured successfully. Do you have specific questions about tool changers or would you like me to explain a specific topic about it? Put your questions in the comments down below and I will try to answer it in one of the upcoming videos. If you enjoyed this video and don't want to miss out the next one, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching, see you next time.